that was heard by his spirit. Everyone. There is no one that pray that was not heard by God. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Check very well. You think you can just lock yourself inside for 40 days like Paul? Or like, uh, like Moses? You are a joker. Jesus Christ did not start going to the wilderness. The Bible says after he was baptized, the Spirit came upon him and drove him to the wilderness. We can baptize you today. You say you want to do 40 days fasting, you will stop the very first day because you require the Spirit of God to enable you to do it. But it's possible for a believer to quench the Spirit. Even when the Spirit is telling you, come you can quench it. That's what many believers do. They keep quenching, 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 quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit. You take the Holy Spirit inside of you to a beer panel and you sit down and you are drinking beer with the Holy Ghost inside of you. You carry the Holy Spirit with you and you open a bottle. You have a house or a room in a hotel and men are coming to sleep with you and giving you money. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. The Bible says, you are the temple of the Lord. Don't you know that God dwells inside of you? The Trinity dwells inside of you. So sometimes we do things and we hide. We think God is not seeing us. We are jokers. If you cannot hide from yourself, you can never hide from God. Because God is inside of you. That is why you know you are wrong. Anytime you do something wrong, you know you are wrong. You know. Nobody may know about you, you know you are wrong. Because you can never run away from yourself. Your shadow will go wherever you go. You are your number one witness and you will report yourself to God. So everyone that pray must know the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? You can't have gone beyond the limit of one which the Holy Spirit can help you to pray. You must maintain a consistent prayer life. You must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you see a man that does more in this kingdom, it's actually a man that God decides to help him more. Because all of us need the help of God, especially in this journey in Christianity. You realize that if God do not help you, the devil will decide to help you. And when the devil help you, he will lead you to death. I realized a long time ago that a man that God helps is always better than a man that helps himself. And many years ago, the Lord told me, Philip, serve us. Allow me to help you. I said, Lord, I am willing. It took a lot of prayer from people to bring me to a point where I can allow God to help me. Because it's almost impossible for a believer to let go. Everyone wants to be the driver of his life. It's very hard for you to just sit at the back seat for God to drive you. First John 5, 7. The Bible says, For there are three that bear the court in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And there are three, and these three are one, and they, there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he testified of his son. I actually wanted to focus on verse 7. The word, the witness of heaven and the witness of earth, if you look very well, you see there are spirit and there are spirit there. The first word in the witness of heaven is the Holy Ghost. The second word in the witness of the earth is the spirit. They are two different things. The witness of earth is the spirit of a man. The witness of heaven is the Holy Spirit. It's Hagios, human, a spirit that is holy. Everyone created upon the face of the earth, whether you know God or you does not know God, he has a spirit. Do you realize that? The womb of a woman has the ability to create another spirit. That is why when a woman is pregnant and she gives birth to a child, the child is not born dead, so you put upon him. No. When the child is born, a spirit is born, a soul is born, and the body is born. Is that true? Is that true? 
not forgiving scriptures. God is your God, He loves you. But when you come as your judge, no one can save you. No one. I assure you. You don't want to see the arm, wrath of God. That is yet approaching the judgment for everyone. In that time, all what you think you know will vanish away. You are a free thinker. You don't believe in God. Don't worry. When you miss heaven, you will never miss hell. At that time, you explain to God, Father. When we speak about the need for you to align with God, you think we are joking. We have seen the pathway of life. He said, I have given unto you life and death, you should choose. You can never pray effectively well if you don't understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Trinity are persons. They are not something spirit no they are person you can encounter them you can relate with them jesus christ came and related with us he related with the apostles they touch him they feel him he disappeared but yet he appeared again i don't want to speak about the encounters here but i believe there are many among the clergy of here that are witness many encounters yes you are speaking about seeing an angel yesterday or something like that let me tell you angels can come to you they can shake you they can stay with you eat together with you in scriptures, angels eat with Abraham. In scriptures, angels stay with Lord. I have had angels stay with me, stay with together, we eat together. I slap with them, the preachers are with me. You may not believe it, it's your own cup of tea. Men that do business with God are men of encounters. Jesus can appear in your room, walk in your room, in the cool daytime, and he will sit with you and say, my daughter, how are you? This is how, when I intend to create you, this is what I want you to do. This and this and that. At that moment, you begin to cry. I was a drunkard. I was a smoker. No one could save me. When Jesus appeared to me, when he appeared to me, every desire went away. All the prayer they have been praying every day, I went to church myself. Christianity became sweet. Why? Because a personality came. Not just something I read in a book. Not just something they preach to us every Sunday. No. God can never be taught. God can only be revealed. If God does not reveal himself to you, nobody can teach you God. You think I'm teaching you God now? No. Your heart needs to go back open so that he can appear to you. When he comes to you, you will forever know him and you will remain with you. But when God did not appear to you, you may never know him. The intention of God is that everyone know him personally. That is why Jesus Christ had to die. That is why he still created Adam in the Garden of Eden. And he come every day to fellowship with them. Sin became a demarcation. But sin was not supposed to be the end. Anytime a man sin, you are not supposed to run away from the presence of God. Come back. When you run from the presence of God, you have allowed the devil win. Because that is what is won. That's what he won before. That when you sin, you run away. Where will you get forgiveness of sin? If not by the throne of grace again. There are no perfect men. There are only men that are forgiven. People that God have chosen to forgive them. There is no essence today without a history. Neither a sinner today without a future in God. You are not that worse. But are you willing to allow God to help you? Are you willing to partner with the spirit of truth so that the reality of God can find expression in your life? The Holy Spirit is the essence of God. The Holy Spirit is the truth of God. Is the spirit of truth. Is the spirit of reality. Jesus Christ himself is the truth of God. You see, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one coming to the Father except through me. That is why you cannot tell me you know the Holy Spirit if you are not born again. You must believe in Jesus. And because you believe in Jesus, it's because you have belief in God. Everyone believes that there is God. Everyone. Whether God, whether Muslim, they say we have the same Allah. No problem. I agree. But do you believe Jesus Christ is the Savior? He's the Son of God. They will never believe that one. Do you not believe in the Holy Spirit? They won't believe that one. You are a believer because you believe anything. Even if you say this handkerchief is your God, you are a believer. But you are a Christian because you believe in Jesus Christ. You can only become a living witness because you believe in the Holy Spirit. That is a person that is the essence of God that can give you life. Jesus Christ himself said, I can do nothing. Nothing except by the Spirit. He said, as I see my Father do, so also I do. Jesus Christ was a good man. Until after he was baptized, the Holy Ghost came upon him before he began to do many things that he did. You can never do anything except the Holy Ghost come upon you. Never. The Father is the source and the sustainer.
sustainer, the origin of all. By him, everything began, and through him, everything was created. The Son of God is the word became flesh, John chapter 1. The Son of God is the express image of the Father. He is the one that can express the Father. Why the word of God is the one that can explain the Father. The Spirit of God is the one that can bring the truth of God into reality. Is the one that can bring the truth of God into manifestation. Is the one that will animate the truth of God. How many of you know what is called animation? Animation. Have you watched cartoon before? Cartoon. Do you know cartoon are not real people? They are not real. But they can look like you, but they are not real. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, your spiritual journey will look like a cartoon. It's only the Holy Ghost that can bring animation, that can animate your working in God. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, your spiritual life will look like a cartoon. It will look like you, it's not you. It will look like God, it's not God. That's why you are here today. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you wonder, am I really born again? I'm not born again. Tomorrow I'm born again. Next tomorrow I'm not born again. Because the Holy Spirit is not your life. It's only the Spirit of God that can lead you and guide you. The Bible said... It's only them that are led by the Spirit that are the sons of God. What made us to become the sons of God is the Spirit leading. Bible speaking says the Spirit that gives life, the flesh profit nothing. The flesh profit nothing. Is the Spirit that gives life. He said the letters kill it. Is the Spirit that gives life. So we join into the life of God. Jesus Christ speaking, say the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. To know the Trinity, you must understand partnership with the Holy Spirit. When we speak about partnership, we speak about koinonia. You are ability to fellowship with God, you are ability to spend time with God, you are ability to commune with God, you are ability to share in intercourse and build capacity with God. Check all through scripture. The word sex does not exist. As canon as the word sex is in the script, is it may be. It doesn't exist in Bible at all. What exists is intercourse, is knowing. And Adam knew his wife as she gave birth. When we speak about relationship with the Holy Spirit, we speak about intercourse with God. When a man fellowship with God, he has intercourse, you partner with God, you share with God. And that is why when you truly love the Lord and you spend time with God, He will share together with you. He will be like to you like a father. He will be to you like a husband. He will be to you like anything. Any woman that is wayward is because you don't know the Holy Ghost as a father. You don't know Him as a husband. You may be a divorcee. You may be barren. You may actually not even have a wife. You may not have anything. Let me tell you. All the addiction, all the loss, everything. Do you know what he's looking for? He's looking for intercourse. And you are supposed to intercourse with the Spirit of God. And that is why people get at night, they see Spirit coming to sleep with them. It's because those spirits are mimicking what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do with you. When you see a Spirit come to sleep with you, it's because you are not spending time with the Spirit of God. And if the Spirit of God does not come upon you, the Spirit of darkness will come upon you. And whether you like it or not, if you refuse God, the devil will choose you. And when he chooses you, he will follow you with you by default. And that is why you can be inside and you feel like masturbating. You feel like watching pornography. What you are looking for is intercourse. And that is what you are supposed to get by the Holy Spirit. And when you spend time with God, all those appetites will go away. Yet, the feeling may come, but you can say no to it. You can say no to it. Because the same grace of God that brings us salvation has appealed unto to us to say no to every ungodliness. It may be hard, but by the Spirit it will be easy for you. The Holy Spirit is also a teacher. Jesus said when he comes, he will teach you all things. One of the only balanced teachers I have known today is the Holy Spirit. He taught me a lot of things. I have listened to men, read their books, read all kinds of things. I assure you, they are not as balanced as the Holy Spirit. Many men perspective are contradicting. One speak like this, another speak like this, another criticize him, another say, they turn back to the Holy Spirit. Anytime you are confused, take the Bible, take the scriptures, you have it together with you. Take it, go and read it yourself. Read it yourself, then dwell with the Holy Spirit. I assure you, I assure you, it will breathe upon you, breathe upon you. The Bible calls it the word of truth, the word of life. Everyone that remains with scriptures and dwell with it, it does not take long, it opens itself. Some of you say you read the Bible, you don't understand. Do you know how you do it? You read it like market women. You know market women. Sorry, I love market women. I'm in business myself. But do you know business?
Let the sharp sharp. First finger. Do you understand? Many of you will carry the Bible. Spend time. Spend time with it. The same way you spend time with a movie. When you want to watch a movie, you remain very well. You put air piece. You are concentrated. When you are playing a game, you are concentrated. Spend time with the scriptures and be concentrated like that. I assure you, you get result. Many of you lift your hand up almost five times just so that you can understand it. What makes you think you read the Bible once and understand? There are verses of scripture. I've read them again and again and again. I have read the Bible cover to cover more than five times. I have read more than six times. So I am still reading again and again. These are things that matter to life and godliness. Your life depends upon it. It's not what you rush. It's what you remain with it. Maybe you have a lot of options. That's why you don't see it very important. You don't see knowing God as being important. You will never know yourself until you know God. Never, never. You will read about prayers from book. You will never pray until you partner with the Spirit of God and engage that hell. In five more minutes, right? The Holy Spirit is your guide. He will guide you. He's your tour guide. We join into the realm of the Spirit. The realm of the Spirit is a wild wilderness. Every, every one of us learn daily. Learn daily there. You learn daily. In the realm of the Spirit, there are demons. There are angels. There are all kinds of spirits. You need the Holy Spirit as a tour guide. It's like your driver there. Without Him, you will collide with things you don't even know. Many people have encountered all kinds of things they don't understand in the Spirit because they didn't have those encounters by the Holy Spirit. say you have an auction from the Holy One, you know all things. From the Holy Spirit, you know all things. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. He will comfort you. The Bible speaks inside. That blessed be God, the Father of all comfort, who has comforted us in the times of our tribulations, so that we can be able to comfort others. We are with the same kind of comfort, where which you have been comforted by God. I see a lot of times, somebody's father die, or brother die, and people come, and they sit down, and they start crying. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. You see, all those things people are saying, they don't understand the pain. You will never understand until you are in the person's shoe. At that time, it's only the Holy Ghost that can comfort the person. It's only the Holy Spirit that can comfort the person. No matter how much you try to understand my pain, you can never understand. Pain is personal. Only the man that goes through the pain know how the pain feels. You can never know the pain of a man. Never. Never. The Holy Ghost is the one that can comfort you. He can comfort you. Sometimes you go through situations. Everybody come and speak all kinds of things. Like Job, everybody was blaming him. Blaming me. Job, you Job, you must have seen. God began to comfort him. When God began to comfort him, it looked very appealing. You may be in school, have carryovers. People are saying, hey, sorry, sorry. You can never comfort somebody that has carryover until you have had carryover yourself. Now you will know the pain of carryover. You know what it means to go and sit in 100 level class when you are in 300 level. You don't know it because you have never been there. So don't tell me that you understand me. You don't understand anything. You don't know what it means to be hungry. How can you tell me that you are sorry or sorry for being hungry? If you are hungry, you understand the pain. The Holy Ghost is our comforter. He's the only one that can be in our suit effectively well. The Bible calls him our helper. The Holy Ghost is our helper. He will help us to pray. The Holy Ghost is our intercessor. The Bible speaking in the book of Jude. Here, beloved, build up yourself in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost help you build your faith. The Holy Spirit is our an intercessor. According to the book of Romans 8, 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not how we should pray as God, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that we cannot be able to utter. Truly speaking, the Holy Ghost is the one that helps us to pray. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to pray. Because sometimes you don't know how you should pray as you ought to pray. Yes, you pray. But how you ought to do, you don't know. That is why it's the Holy Ghost, who is God in himself, that we pray to God. It's like God praying to God to you. That is the highest level of prayer. When a man prays in the Spirit, it's the highest level of prayer because it is God praying to himself. So you know what he has to pray. And that is why you must learn to partner with the Holy Spirit. Learn to partner with the Holy Spirit. How? partner with the Holy Spirit. It's not what I can teach now. Can you rise on your feet as we give the benediction? My time is fast spent. I have taken extra one minute and I have to be law abiding. Can you pray in one minute and 
Jesus, the Holy Spirit, help me as I advance in you. Help me to know you more. As I go back today to Celeste, may you encounter me, visit me as you visit your beloved people in the act of the apostles. Visit me, encounter me, reveal yourself to me in the language that I can understand. Speak to the Lord in a language that you can understand. Pray in any language you know. Pray in any language you know. God is the Father of all spirit. He is the Father of all spirit, the Father of all flesh. He is the one that we quicken the living and the dead. He is the one that makes us one together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He died for our sake. The reason why he died is so that me and you can know him. It's not just a showmanship that he can raise from the dead. No, so that you and me can come into the same level of authority. That means the cross, the greatest divide. The cross becomes the greatest divide. We celebrate death, burial, and resurrection because we can ascend. The cross is the greatest reminder that you are always thinking of me. So now Jesus. Father, I pray that as we go, may your spirit and your power beyond the portraits of men encounter us. I ask that may everyone under the sound of my voice return back in the power of the spirit. I baptize you under the atmosphere of the spirit. As you go, may the Lord God of heaven encounter you. There are pains and sorrows in your heart that no man understands. I ask that may the Lord God of heaven visit you and reveal himself to you mightily. Father, take away the burden upon the heart of men and strengthen them. Keep them in your peace. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. May the scripture become a life to you. As you open your mouth to begin to pray, may the Lord God quicken you to pray. Like a magic, as you open the scripture to read, may you find the Lord. May you find yourself. May he encounter you. May he become life to you in the name of Jesus. That infirmity in your body is gone. May the Lord God of heaven do you a miracle. As you return back, let there be a difference. Let there be a change. Every pain in your body is taken away in the name of Jesus. And I ask, oh God, that from this night, let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders in your life tremendously. Every door that the devil has closed, let it be opened in the name of Jesus. By this level of understanding, deliverance come by prayer. Deliverance come 